Hey, uh, thank you guys for sharing. Uh, uh, Emmanuel or Manny? Is it Emmanuel or is it Manuel? So can you stand up? I just want to prophesy over you, bro. God is all over you, bro. Yeah, he's all over you. Um, I feel like God's given you um, prophetic insight. I feel like the Lord has given you like uh, a gift, a real gift. And, uh, and, I, and I imagine, you know, you've been aware of that your whole life, but it's come out in certain ways, maybe certain ways to like pick up on what's happening in a room or just kind of like, you know, but it's not just street smarts. There's a, there's a God given gift that he's given you. You have dreams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm not surprised at all. So, um, so I just want to bless you, uh, because I feel like he's marked you for a real call, um, on your life. And, uh, and he's so faithful. I mean, God, he is so faithful. He, he is so faithful. Uh, I mean, your story, I mean, he, he's just so good. So even as I, I pray for you, I'm like getting chills. So um, let's just extend our hands to, to Manuel. Hey, Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness to Manny. We thank you, God, for your goodness to him. We thank you, God, for uh, for the testimony of Jesus being the spirit of prophecy and that he will prophesy, that he will declare the truths of God, that he will declare the realities of heaven to those around him. I, I feel like the Lord is uh, is cultivating your gift. He's cultivating your voice and he's and he's causing it to hit the mark. I just see you like an like a bullseye hitting the mark and it's and it's going to uh, it's going to come with you yielding to his leading, yielding to him prompting you and as you uh as you trust him and as you just say yes to him as you have, he's going to show you how uh, precise uh he's speaking to you and it's and it's going to be like a scalpel just uh cutting things away. And uh, it may not make sense. It may not be uh, uh, the uh, typical road or the or the way that you expect. But I feel like uh, that's God's training to uh, specifically do something through you that uh, He hasn't done before in others. So I just bless you, Manny, in Jesus' name. Yeah, and Sandy's got something for you too. So I saw you um, when you were up there. I saw an eagle behind you. I saw like wings. You want to stand up and. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to lay hands on you. <laughs> I saw um, like eagle's wings. And I saw, so God has called you to rise, to rise up above. So you're in a training time not, right now of soaring and coming down and soaring. God is teaching you. So, uh, Isaiah 40 says that they that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings like an eagle, shall run and not be weary, shall walk and not faint. And there's uh, something, I forgot something else in there, but that's, I, I release that portion over you, that you will mount up with wing, wings like an eagle, you will run and not be weary, you will walk and not be faint. And part of that, uh, the fullness of that is, I'm telling you, you do not have to perform for God. You do not have to tap dance you don't have to read the best scripture. You don't have to have the best testimony. You don't have to. We release you today from, from uh, that place of religion, from that place of tradition, from the words that have been spoken over your life that you are not, that you are not. We cancel those words now and we say you are. We frame up around your life, you are the son of God. You are the beloved of, of the Lord. You are the delight of your father. You are a legitimate man in the sight of God and in the sight of men. Your life is significant and you are free. We declare freedom to you. So, Father, we just thank you for this man, this eagle that is a soarer. This one, I even, I know this is kind of, kind of weird maybe, but I saw your, your arms come up with, with like the, and I saw you dancing. Now, it's not like we see sometimes here in church. It was a definite, it, there, was, there was a definite rhythm to it. There was a definite warfare in it. It was, uh, so I'm just going to declare the dance of the eagle over you, and you can work that out with the Lord. Um, does that make sense to you? It does? Okay. Yeah, I, I saw it very clearly, just very, that your arms were strong, 
the wings were strong. Your feet were doing the warfare. Your feet were doing the warfare. It wasn't your, your being good. So we just break off you, do good, get good, do bad, get bad. God is for you 100%. God is for you. So we bless this awesome man today, Father. We thank you, Father, what is written in his book in Psalm 139. Father, everything that's written in that book, we say before there was ever one of Manny's days, we say, Lord, be it unto him today. Be it unto him in fullness, in wisdom, in honor, in glory, and in power. Father, today we frame around him freedom. Freedom, we say no longer tap dance, no longer... Um, no longer any even thinking of performing for you. It's just living for you, God, just living for you. We break off, Father, um, in the name. We just put the blood of Jesus between him, Father, and the generations behind him uh, of death in Jesus' name. And we just de we declare life over you. We break every, um, every, uh, even every assignment of death in the name of Jesus, and we call you into life. We call you into abundant life. We call you into, we say, breathe again. You can breathe again in the freedom of the Lord. So we bless this man. We call this man one of valor, one of strength, one of understanding. We thank you, Father, for the shalom of God. And Lord, I just pray that over these next several months, as you take him into the cleft of the rock, as you take him into the secret place, as you take him up the secret staircase that's in the cleft of the rock, that, Father, there would be a spirit of revelation that would, uh, he would live in, that he would move in and breathe in. I thank you, Father, for revealing truths and mysteries, sounds and frequencies round about him. I thank you, Father, for dreams Lord, I thank you. We call an end to hopelessness in his life. And we declare to you that uh, your dreams, your desires fulfilled are a tree of life. We thank you, Father, that this man eats from no longer from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But the tree of life is his portion today and forever. And so we stand together as a people. We stand together and we bless you. We call you a brother. We call you a son. We call you a warrior. We call you an eagle in the spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on. Praise God. Come on. So good. You know, when, uh, when someone gets prophesied over, we get a window into, uh, into what God knitted together in his mother's womb. You know, we get a picture of that. And that's the beauty of that, um, because when we honor that, we actually, uh, like, we actually get to see God's thoughts towards a person. That is, like, such an awesome thing. So, uh, Manny, God bless you, man. Excited for all God's doing. Um, uh, Philip, I just had a quick word for you. Uh, you know, I feel like uh, the Lord is, um, he's expanding your shepherd's heart. So I feel like, uh, uh, you know, I know that your position is more regional and it's more like building bridges, but I feel like the Lord is expanding your heart as a shepherd and that that's, uh, that there's actually like a legacy on you, that there's something in you. Does that make sense at all? Yeah, that, that that's wired into you. Um, and, and yet, what you're doing now is also wired into you, that God's blessed you with a mind to be able to handle both. And actually, it's going to enrich uh, what you do. So that God's even going to just give you even more of a shepherd's heart, even for the guys and the house. And just um, it's going to you're going to create a lot of impact, um, not just in one compartment, but across the board. So. So, yeah, I just bless you, Philip. I bless you with increase. I bless you with the fullness, the maturity, the full extended out of all that God has for you. I declare legacy over you. I declare uh, uh, just blessing over your calling and, uh, and what God is uh, doing through you, that, uh, that God's going to use you to mentor and disciple others. Yeah, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, bless you, man. Awesome, awesome, awesome. 
Well, uh, we'll create some space in a little bit also to uh, just see what God wants to do. Uh, but I got a word for you guys. And so we're going to continue in our uh, Church Under Fire uh, sermon series. We're diving into the book of uh, 1 Corinthians. And we're just going to see how far uh, that will take us. You know, we did the book of Acts a few years ago, and that was a 20-month study. Uh, but I, I don't know about you guys, but I love diving into books and just going through it. There's just a rich thing that happens. And if you aren't a part of our Facebook group, the Church Under Fire Facebook group, go ahead and uh, find us on Facebook. It's a, it's a group that uh, is really just for diving deeper into this study. And that's where if we uh, do more teachings to kind of like catch us up, etc., they're, they're going to be on there from our pastors and elders. It's going to be awesome place for you to, to just be unpacking stuff. Um, when we started this out, getting a new journal is, is important. Maybe getting a new Bible is important. So, uh, so definitely would encourage you guys as you jump into this uh, sermon series. Uh, we are getting stuff as you're getting stuff. And you're, what you bring to the table is really enriching the study. So be sure to join us on that. Um, I'm just going to uh, pray, and then we're going to dive into uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to 9, and, uh, and I really feel like God's going to do some things. He's already moving. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you've done already this morning. Yeah, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that it is an honor and a privilege to be a part of your body, God, that you, you had the, uh, the love to look past all of the things personally that I've done. And you're like, uh-uh, I got plans for you. And you did that for every single one of us in this room and those watching online that you said, you know what? I know who you really are. I made you for a purpose and I love you. So, Lord, we just, we love you. We adore you. We thank you, God, that we have the privilege and honor of being a part of your body to be able to, to move and breathe, and have our being in you. So Lord, have your way this morning. Aha moments. Wake us up to how good you are for us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Well, let's, uh, let's jump into the scripture. Uh, verse 6 of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So it says, However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Yeah, yeah, amen. You know, um, I'm going to unpack that a little bit. So it says, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. That word mature um, is the Greek word telos, which means reaching the end. And it's kind of like um, the old, like an old pirate's telescope. Actually, uh, Philip, that's kind of what I saw or was speaking over you, just that place of full maturity or the, um, the telescope opening all the way so that you can use it for its full usage. It's, it's nothing wasted, nothing lacking, the full usage. And so that's what, what Paul is saying. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age. We're not regurgitating the stuff we hear, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. That word uh, mystery is mueo, which um, is akin to mysterion, uh, which basically is shutting the eyes and mouth to experience mystery. I thought that was interesting because, uh, you know, sometimes there's certain things that we can't know without shutting our eyes and shutting our, ma- and shutting our mouth because there's a, there's a different layer that God's unveiling to us. And that's what Paul's talking about. He's saying we, we talk about this mystery that we don't get from 
what's happening around us in society, we get from heaven. And we get through tapping in. Amen? So, which none of the rulers, so which God had ordained, so as he's ushering us in to this uh, wisdom and mystery, he ordained it before Come on, before the ages, for our glory. So he prepared it aside for us. He's saying, this is for us. It's not kept hidden from you. It's kept hidden for you so that you can learn to tap in to his presence and be aware. Even now, just being aware of what he's doing and saying, oh, do you feel it? Do you see it? Because he's doing stuff right now. Yeah, amen. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. You know, um, we went to Spokane last week, and we got to celebrate that. Uh, last week uh, at our service on Sunday, we went for a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night, and or was it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? One or the other, but we went for a few nights. It was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we just saw God show up. But I'll be honest, on my way there, or even when we were planning, I wasn't totally sure what God was doing. I wasn't totally sure fully what we were doing. I mean, that's kind of what 2020 has been. It's like, uh, I don't know, but we got three days. Let's do this. And uh, that's literally what we had. We had a few working days and Jeanette was able to piece together an awesome team. And we just went and we went with the goal of stoking revival in Spokane, in stirring it, even to the point of we're going to deposit into the region. We don't want to like get them to pay for anything. We just want to, we just want to invest. We want to invest. So kind of new, not really sure what the game plan was, to be honest, but uh, Darren uh, had something. So I was like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> you know, amen. It's good to have someone else who uh, at least looks more confident than you. You know what I'm saying? It's really good. So, uh, so we're going and we, we headed there. And uh, when we showed up, uh, granted, Darren and I had gone to this same church Last year, so last March or April, we were there and we did uh, a night on the Wednesday. But we showed up tonight and I, and I would just say my expectations were different. I feel like God gave a grace to have a blank slate. You guys know what I mean? He just gave me a grace to just say, you know what, I have certain expectations, certain things, but, uh, but God's kind of up to something new, amen? He's, he's, he's doing something new, you know, and, and he had a way of just saying, let's, Let's do something new tonight, but I had no idea what that was, and I said, okay, let's do it. So, Wednesday comes, we're at the meeting, and I got this picture of the lion kind of roaming amongst the people, and how when the lion shows up or your dad shows up, uh, all the problems that were bigger than you um, actually aren't bigger than you anymore because he's here, and he's here to deal with that stuff. He's here to handle that stuff that any of the bigger things, he's like, I got this. You can just uh, relax a little bit because I'm here, and I'm going to make sure that everything's set in its proper place. And so that was the picture that I got, and, uh, and then Darren brought his children up, and man, they just brought it. They had uh, words, uh, uh, words of knowledge. They're like, uh, I see, um, like, stomach issues, uh, there's bones, I see bones that God's going to deal with, and, and uh, basically uh, back problems was something that was highlighted. So these guys came up, um, one was an elder in the church, uh, another uh, is just a part of the church, and um, et cetera. There was a few people that came. God kind of highlighted this guy, and I was like, I know I have back pain. You know, personally, I, I had a back injury in 2008 and um, slipped herniated disc and it's all f- types of fun stuff. Yeah. Amen. Um, and so there definitely was back pain. And I, I felt that. But I felt like the Lord gave me a grace to focus on other people's breakthrough. And so I went to the man and I said, I'm praying for this man that he gets the breakthrough. I don't even care if I get anything out of this. I just want to see him get breakthrough. And so I'm praying and my hand gets really hot and that's a good sign. Um, And I was like, okay, do you feel that? And he's like, yeah. 
and uh, I, I put my hand on his, uh, in his lower back. And so Jeanette uh, Werman and I were praying for this guy. And, uh, and it was just awesome. The heat was really there. And then all of a sudden the heat from my hand just felt like it kind of slowly went down and left me. So that was cool. And then uh, that was pretty much it. We prayed for him and, and there you go. Instead of him going back to his seat, he ended up staying up front because he wanted to testify. And he basically said that he's had back pain for over 30 years. He, uh, uh, in those 30 years, this is the first time that he's actually felt God do something. And he was excited. You could see it on his face. He was like that breath of fresh air, like, oh, wow, like something actually happened. And, and he said that while we were praying for him, that he got taller twice. Like, he's like, things shifted, and I just felt taller. And then he's like, and I didn't even tell you, but I had this thing in my groin that was really hurting, and I felt this, I don't know how to describe it, like an electric shock that hit the groin area. And, uh, and, and he was just, like, celebrating. It was awesome, right? So praise God for that. It was really good, you know? Like, so that was awesome, right? And, uh, and it was really good. But I feel like there's something even more that God was doing in the midst of that that he was showing me. Because when I went home, um, uh, my wife was like, Alexa, play Tasha Cobbs, you know, um, right? And uh, if you don't know what Alexa is, just Google it. There you go. Okay, so um, basically she played, played some music. And, uh, and Tasha Cobbs is a gospel singer. She's amazing. And, uh, and the third song that, uh, that popped up was uh, I'm Getting Ready, a song that, uh, called I'm Getting Ready. And the chorus goes, I'm getting ready to see something that I've never seen. I'm getting ready to see something that I've never seen. And it, and it was this, this like, oh, wow. Like. And then I looked into this study. And I was like, oh, that's what I'm preaching on this next Sunday. Like, okay, I'm paying attention. Are you guys paying attention? I'm not saying you're not to my message, but are we just paying attention regularly? Because God's always speaking, right? And I felt like the Lord highlights something. He said, um, uh, that's what's happening. Because when I saw this man after 30 years, it wasn't just the fact that he had electricity come into his um, groin area, <laughs> you know, or whatever, or, you know, that his back was shifting and that, and that uh, he got touched, which is awesome. But I think what's even more awesome is that his hope was restored. That, you know, that place of, oh, God, I haven't seen you move. And, oh, God, it's been 30 years. And, oh, God. And then God shows up and he's like, yeah, I'm still God. And I'm way better than you could ask or think or imagine. That's who he is. And I really feel like that's what he's doing. You know, actually, it's funny because I was scrolling on Facebook while we were worshiping. Such an edifying thing to do. Hey, hey. You know, and, um, and Elizabeth Cooper, uh, who we love in this house, um, uh, made a post. And she said, for years I have said and sung prophetically, and this was an hour ago, get ready for something like you've never seen before. Come on. This isn't just a phrase to get us pumped up. Amen. I have seen portions of this reality in the spirit. There is com a coming awakening an awakening to the reality of union with Christ that is so other than anything we have seen. It doesn't fall within the boundary lines of what we have framed up in our minds as the structure in which revival lives. It's completely outside of the whole wide skin the Western church currently possesses. So definitely check that out. But I really feel like the Lord is saying something and he's like, I can use all of this stuff to line up and you don't have to try. You don't have to work harder. You don't have to pray harder. You don't have to like just hope that you got the right revelation or just, um, uh, you know, like fill yourself a little more. Two weeks ago, Darren said, hey, you don't need more revelation. You don't need more information. You just need to know Jesus and that he's with you. That's all you need to know. The manual is Emmanuel. That's the manual. Like, what do we do? God with us. That's it. That's the secret to all of this. And if you didn't know, that's 
all you need to know. So I felt like the Lord was highlighting to me that he's getting us ready to see something that we've never seen in our personal lives, in our families, in our marriages, in our neighborhoods, in our job, as a society, politically, socially, education-wise, globally. He's getting us ready to see something that he's ne- we've never, ever seen before. And sometimes you have to shift your eyes off of what you've been looking at so that you can have your eyes available to see what he's saying. Amen? So I felt like there was a key that God gave uh, during the week, you know, something that came uh, while we were in Spokane. And just to highlight, I think Spokane was very, very uh, symbolic and intentional, that there's a reason why uh, we are doing these revival teams, and it's not one of those just things that we're doing. I feel like this is kind of a prototypical picture of how the body should operate in team ministry, working together, not working too hard, not putting it on one person, but actually everyone bringing their peace and saying, yeah, I know you got something. Come on, let's, let's do it. And so you're going to see us functioning as a team, just like you did last week. This is a, a a wineskin that God is uh, unpacking in this, in this hour that is uh, activating the body of Christ. You know, we um, exist to awaken people to their identity and destiny in Jesus Christ. That's our mission as a church. But what that looks like is that we are like a platform. We are like a, uh, a rocket platform that we lay our lives down so that we can edify the body of Christ. Ephesians 4, verse 12 and 13. So, Check that out. That's what God is doing. So there you go. Getting a little fired up. So I feel like there's one key I want to give you guys, and, uh, and, um, and it really speaks to uh, how we get ready. Uh, because when I was going to pray for that guy, I had back pain. I had my own needs, but I looked to him to get what he needed first. And I felt like there was a key, and it's in Philippians 2. So if you can go to Philippians 2 real quick, I'm going to unpack that. Awesome. So it says, Philippians 2, verse 3. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. What that means is he didn't grasp to his equality with God, he relinquished that so that he could come down and humble himself. As it goes on, it says here, it says, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven. Yeah, come on. And of those on the earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, our Father. Yeah, yeah, come on. It's it's our posture to walk in humility, which is, which is to esteem others as more important than ourselves, that ushers in the unseen. You know, going back to that place of uh, mysterion, where it says closing the eyes and the ears and, and, and revealing what, uh, what God is saying, there's also a word that uh, is associated with that. It's called pathema, which is a Greek word for suffering that is associated with the mysteries that Paul is talking about. Um, God matures us to know his mysteries as we choose to deny ourself, getting our eyes off of us and onto him and what he is doing. This, is, this suffering is not negative. You know, um, the reason why 
actually, it, it could be negative if it was done apart from faith. So like if someone is suffering but apart from faith, if there was not no, a redeeming nature of who Christ is, then yeah, there, there would be negativity to it. But it's not negative because we don't suffer like the world, but we suffer unto knowing God more deeply and him revealing himself all the more. So this place of, uh, of us saying, God, I got all types of needs. My back was hurting, like, and it's been legit real pain, right? But I, uh, I didn't care enough about myself. I was humble. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was so humble, guys. No, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> but there's a key there. There really is a key. You know, Melissa, uh, when she got up, she's like, hey, um, and shout out to Melissa. Melissa's a gem. She really is amazing. And uh, when she got up and shared, she was like, look, guys, I've had my fair share of, uh, of trials that I've had to walk through, but if you want breakthrough, you serve. If you want breakthrough in your life, you get your eyes off of yourself and you start to look at those around you and you say, how can I serve you? How can I help you? How can I do this? Because as you do that, you're actually letting go of the, uh, the structure, the mindset that was, you know, uh, keeping you held on to what, where you were. There's a, there's a relinquishing that happens when we look at, at other people and we look to what God's doing. And then he starts to show up and he starts to do things that we, that we didn't even imagine or think. So just want to encourage you guys, there's something in this place of us taking a moment, obviously honoring what God gives us. And if you have something, give it. It's not about you. It's about what he's doing through you. But if you are feeling led to kind of like get ahead or whatever, then just, just know that the Lord is, is, has, has a better way. He has a better way, and he's doing that through saying, hey, 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 fall back. I got something that I want you to do. There'll be a time for that. So um, is that good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. You know, I'll leave it with this. Uh, Pastor Gil shared a story back in the day, um, and Pastor Keith or Debbie, you guys can kind of, fact check me, but um, there was a roof that uh, you guys were trying to, we needed a roof, but then a church in Africa needed a roof, and God said, give the money that you have for your roof to them so they can have their roof, And, uh, and you guys did that, and you sold it out of obedience, and then from what I remember her saying is that that was one of the biggest financial months uh, that you guys had seen, and then the money had come in uh, elsewhere to pay for the roof. Is that really quickly? Yeah. So, I mean, there's something even here in this house that, that we, we know that there's key to say, yeah, God, I have so much need. I have so much need. I have so much need. Out of this place, I know you're good, and you take care of my needs, so I'm going to look to serve others. And that's what love is. That's really what it means to love your neighbor, is to say, I'm going to love selflessly, and I'm going to give out of this place, even if I have need. And I'm promising you guys, he's going to do stuff beyond your wildest dreams. He's, he's going to do that, and, and he's also going to break any control that we have. He's going to break any uh, stuff that we kind of do to survive because when the lion walks in the room, we can actually relinquish our uh, survival mechanisms. You know, we have a way of kind of just relying on our own, and that may be good for a season, but somehow those mindsets, they stick with us beyond, and they don't want to die, you know. Survival mechanisms don't want to die. But the Lord says, hey, survival is not what I created you for. God did not create us for survival. He created us to thrive. He created us to rule and reign. And we do that not through the world's wisdom. We do that through this mysterion, this thing of closing my eyes or mouth and shutting off certain senses so that I can tap into heaven And then I can see the true thing that's happening. This whole sermon series is called Church Under Fire. We are not under fire, meaning under fire from the world and bunker down. We are not. 
we are under the fire of heaven. And that's the whole point, is that we are under the fire of God. And as we go, we actually walk as uh, witnesses to this mysterious reality of heaven that, that the world does not understand. It says, light shines in the darkness, and the darkness could not comprehend it and could not overcome it. So just want to encourage you guys that, uh, that as we shift our mindset, God's going to wow us. He's going to put us in awe of what he's doing, and uh, we get to be a part of it. Amen? So good. So good. Come on. You got some? All right, cool. So, uh, we're, yeah, Patty, come on. Come on. Come on. Let's do this. Boom just stirring in me the whole time that you've been preaching and just what we've been saying. But I, I keep feeling like um, the Lord really wants us to know how to walk from a place of sonship because the son never grabs something and takes it. And it's like Adam and Eve in the garden, they already had, like the, the enemy came and told them, you will be like God. They already were like God. But they reached out and they grabbed it and they took it. And sons do not do that. Sons do not take something. So that's where to step into that place of rest. And, you know, and we're talking about, I mean, we're receiving wisdom in that realm of heaven by just going, Jesus, you're in me and I'm in you. And just step, stepping into that place of rest. Because it says, you know, I kept in the first service, I heard the Father say, it is my good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He wants to give us everything. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. He wants to give that to us. And it's his good pleasure. But we need to understand that we are chill, his sons in the kingdom, and we don't have to take it because he wants to give it to us. And it's that place of rest that we are going to see beyond we could ever imagine. Eyes have not seen what he wants to give to us, what he's prepared for us. And, you know, I was, I, as I'm sorry, I was just going to, this has been just bubbling up, but it's like, um, it says that that wisdom is from a different age. That wisdom has been prepared. It's like the books of Daniel talk about the mysterion, the myst mysteries. That, those books are now being opened. Those books of Daniel have been waiting for this generation to be opened. And it's like, that's what's going to be revealed. And it says, you know, it's the glory of God to conceal a thing but it's the glory of kings to search it out. That's what we are. We are kings. We're to search it out because the Father, it's there for us. The Lord wants to give it to us. He wants to reveal the hidden things, the things that have been waiting for us for ages. So, whoa. Yeah, come on. So good. Yeah, it's really good. You know, I saw a picture of uh, um, a deflated ball or like a deflated fruit. And I, um, I feel like uh, uh, the Lord wants to come and inflate uh, some things. And so like if you felt like you've been deflated and you have no uh, give, um, would you stand? <laughs> you stand to your feet. I want to, yeah, come on. Come on. There you go. There's, there's the brave ones. There you go. Come on. Yeah, because, uh, because here's the thing. Um, I saw him, like, come to a fruit, like, almost like how a raisin gets shriveled up and uh, this place of feeling depleted. And I just saw him kind of, like, come and bring a plumpness to it, like, to where it's, like, perfectly, like, uh, restored. Okay. So, so Lord, we just thank you for these brave ones. We thank you, God, that at the end of our strength is where your strength is made perfect. We thank you, God, that, uh, that there's, um, that there's, yeah, just glory on this place of being broken and contrite before you. And so, Lord, we just declare an inflation right now, just a holy inflation 
It's not by, uh, by man's wisdom. It's not even by our works. It's not by our might. It's by your spirit. And so we just declare a refreshing, a refreshing, a refreshing right now in Jesus' name. Yeah, that there would be a mindset shift, God. Hey, that there would be a mindset shift right now, that there would be a, a, a tangible change even in, in, in their soul right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the enemy, what the enemy tried to bring is depletion, but God's bringing increase. He's bringing increase. He's bringing increase right now. Yeah, so I just declare increase over you guys right now in Jesus' name, a refreshing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not under. You are not the tail. You are the head. You are the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I just declare fullness. Yeah, fullness, fullness, fullness in Jesus' name. Yeah, amen. Amen. Take it. You get more, too. There you go. Come on. Last shall be first. There you go. She stood out last. Yeah. It's good. Come on. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You? Hmm? you good? Sure. Do you? Yeah. Right. Okay. Do you? Do you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just want to, first of all, just... Uh, just say, when I had a chance to watch the Spokane team, um, I, I couldn't make it, and my heart was there. And it's like, I saw, so I saw the Setons, I saw Jessica, who else was there? Sonora, I saw the, the kids, Darren's and Andrea's kids, and it's like, whoa, God, you're, you're using anyone that's available. <laughs> and it, it was so awesome. And so I just honor, I honor what's going on, what the Lord is doing. And um, so for the, is there any more of the teen challenge? Philip, I know you're here. Is there any more of the teen challenge? Could you guys just stand if you're here? I just want to. Again, just thank you for coming, and yeah, just a quick, a quick word. I, I felt like the Lord, he's, he's like in the recruiting business for his army, and I just felt like you guys are, you guys are being handpicked, and you might be saying, Me? Like, why would, why would the Lord be choosing me? But what you've gone through and really what you're going through is really giving you the authority to go out and be what God has you to be. And what, what so, so my encouragement is, and, and you touched on it earlier about being humble and, and being, being in a place where and, and I, I, well, let me just stop. I, I heard this word counterculture for you, for you all. I heard that word counterculture. And, it, and it's like God is, God is so cool because he's like thinks backwards sometimes from the way we think. And for you, he handpicked you out of tragedy, out of hardship, out of suffering, out of just wanting to give you know commit suicide and he chose you and he and you are his and and the counterculture part i felt was the lord saying i want you to go after my heart i'm going after your heart will you go after my heart and, and I know you deal with the practical things, too, and getting them to, to get jobs and get out in the, you know, in the world and be productive. But, but there was something I just felt the Lord say, these men, they're mine. Like you said, Patty, they're mine, and I am theirs. And that's the first and that's the best thing is that you're going after God and and that's the cult countercultural part is like the world the world can won't won't really help you in that area but thankfully teen challenge will help you and God will help you to to go after him so
bless you guys. Thank you again for coming. Awesome. Thanks, Grant. So good. So good. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, well, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Jesus, thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you for what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, why don't we stand to our feet? So as we kind of wrap up um, in closing, Sandy's about to bring it. You know what I'm saying? Let's give it up for Sandy. Yeah, I think a lot, um, much of what I could sense here in the room this morning, especially when Melanie started singing uh, that song, Dance With Me, there was a real invitation into the intimacy of the Lord with us. And I felt like it was a real invitation with, from Jesus um, to, it's maybe dancing isn't your thing, but it's the intimacy that we were invited into. And then I saw, <clears throat> I felt like, um, and in that place of intimacy, which if you would let your heart go there, if you would let just say yes, just surrendering to that place, I felt like um, it was, I don't, I'm not sure what it was that I saw that opened up. And I feel like the Lord retract, took out words that we've been living under because hope deferred makes the heart grow sick, but desire fulfilled is a tree of life. And I felt like before we leave here that we could take a big bite of that tree of life. So if you would just um, um, agree with me, I just... I'm not quite sure what I saw there, but I, you know, I've got it in my, I've got it moving in my spirit. So, so Father, we just thank you for, I just uh, take authority this morning over hopelessness. <clears throat> and I silence that voice and every assignment with it on, for your people this morning. I thank you, Father, and we just, I just declare over all of us this morning that place of intimacy, the divine romance the dance of the lover of our soul is ours in fullness. God, that we come into the rhythm, <clears throat> Jesus, that we come into the rhythm of you um, <clears throat> in the divine romance. I, I prophesy that over us as a people, divine romance, the divine dance, uh, the divine dance, the rhythms, the movings together. And in that place today, Father, I thank you that words of hopelessness are now removed, words of condemnation when we were children, words of condemn condemnation when we were rejected in places, all the words of death, every word of death uh, that has been over us, Father, in any form, or in us, Lord, in the, in the uh, bloodlines, Father, of our, of our lives. I curse those now. I say no more, no more to speak. In Jesus' name, and Father, I declare hope. I declare we are a people of hope. A joyful expectation of good is what biblical hope is. A joyful expectation of good. We remove, Father, we, I agree with what I see in heaven to not, the, today, that you are removing the, uh, the power, the influence of the negative words, of the words of death, and I replace those now, God, with the words of life. And I say to you, you are a son, you are legitimate, you are good, you are a good thought of God, you are a desire of God, and I release permission to dream, I release permission for you to dream again, dream big, dream way beyond what you could ask or think, because that who is who your father is, his hand is open always open, always has been open. God, awaken us to your open hand. Awaken us, Father, to the deeper place of your desire for us. Spirit of revelation, we invite you to come upon us as a people that, Lord, what we've uh, worked in our heads would now come into our hearts, would come into our spirits. Father, thank you today that we are released from every word of witchcraft, we are released from every word of doom and gloom. Today, we are released from every curse, Father, uh, from, uh, from back, to, back to Adam. We declare the blood of Jesus 
uh, from the, on the words of generations behind us back to Adam. When we come forward, God, into that, what the, we come under the blood, Father, the word, the blood that speaks a better word. We come under that word now as a people today. We come under that word. That word speaks life and hope and goodness and acceptance in the name of Jesus. So thank you, Father. We come under your word, the word of God. We come under that today, God. We come under the goodness, the banner of your love over us today. We come under the truth, Lord. So, Father, I just bless your people this morning and this afternoon. God, I bless your people, Father. I thank you, Lord, uh, for our rising up into words of truth today. And thank you, Father. I declare we are a people that will, because of desired, fulfilled, we will eat from the tree of life in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Amen. So good. Well, uh, if you need ministry, you come on up to the front, and uh, our ministry team would love to pray for you guys. Uh, we have an awesome ministry team. But check it out. God, I feel like what God is saying is he's showing us another way, and he's showing us how to walk into our fullness. So expect this week to go with the shifts and uh, I just want to bless you guys. I bless you right now that this week you'll see the shifts. You'll see the things that God is causing you to see. And you're going to fall right in place. You're going to step right into place. It's going to be based on his grace. Oh, yeah, it's a whole new space. Come on. Hey, hey. So we just declare favor and breakthrough over you guys as you step in that you're going to see an, a real ooey gooey uh, transition into what he's calling you to do. So we bless you guys. God bless your Sunday and the rest of your week. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Come on.